Hi everybody. Today is day 20 of a 40 day master cleanse. Um, or at least I'm trying for 40 days. Halfway point. Yay. Um, so tomorrow marks three weeks of doing the master cleanse. Not eating any food whatsoever except for my lemonade mixture, which is lemons, cayenne pepper, and maple syrup. Um, <clears throat> I've been following the cleanse uh, regime very strictly. I've done the salt water flush every morning. I've taken laxative tea every evening since I started. Um, the only tweak I've made is that occasionally I will drink different tea, so like peppermint tea um, and a couple of different herbal teas. And then also I've been taking, this is my dog right here. Mm -hmm. Yes, yeah, she's your bulldog. She's a bulldog. Um, so, oh, and tincture. So I've been taking two or three different types of antifungals um, to help kill my yeast. So I am still struggling with two or three, like, symptoms of having a cold or the flu. Um, I am, I would say, 90% positive that it's actually yeast die-off symptoms. Um, the reason why I think that it is a yeast die off. So I've been sick for six days uh, and my symptoms change every day. So one day I'll have um, like a fever and a really bad headache and then the next day both of those will be gone and instead I'll have a sore throat and maybe a really bad cough and then the next day those are gone but then I have a headache again. So over the past six days symptoms have sort of come and gone, gotten better and worse. Um, without any type of, like, it doesn't really make any sense. Um, and then also the other reason is I do live with my boyfriend and obviously we share everything and he is not sick. So I, I would say there's probably a very good chance that this is actually yeast style, which is kind of exciting actually, um, just to know that some of the yeast is dying in my body, to know that the master cleanse and or some of the antifungal treatments I've been taking are working. Uh, both of those things are, are kind of, it's nice to know. It sucks to be sick, but it's nice to know that um, <laughs> my dog wants attention. Um, it's nice to know that it, it is actually working a little bit. Um, yeah, so I don't know if I'm going to last for the full 40 days. I'm Right now, I'm sort of, my goal is sort of to go for 28 days, which is four full weeks uh, of master cleansing, and then, again, probably about a week coming off of the cleanse before I reintroduce all of the food back into my body. Um, so I'm also toying with maybe doing a short anti-candida cleanse, after the master cleanse as well. I'm not 100% sure about that either. Um, basically, the only reason of stopping early is because I'm tired of not eating, and that's really it. There's, there's no other reason. I don't have any type of dizziness, or I don't have any type of low energy. I'm, I'm not really craving food nearly as badly as I was. It stopped really around day 13, day 14, so the two-week mark. So the last week, it's really just been a breeze in terms of um, those types of challenges. Mind you, I've been pretty sick, so um, that's definitely been a different type of challenge. So um, there's a bit of give and take, but really it just boils down to the fact that I just want to eat. Um, so we'll see how it goes, though. Take it one day at a time. Um, but I am definitely trying for at least one more week, so eight more days on the Master Cleanse. Uh, again, though, maybe 40 days. We'll see how it goes. Um, so I, I do want to stress, just again, I know I've said this like a million times, but if you think that you have any type of yeast overgrowth in your system, um, you're not even sure, but you think you might, go to your health food store and pick up a tincture. Or check out some of, there's a few other, like, more medical type treatments as well if, if you know, homeopathic remedies aren't your thing. Um, three lac, I've never tried it, but I've seen it on a number of different forums, T-H-R-E-E-L-A-C. And then, again, the antifungals I'm taking are caprylic acid, barberry, I'm taking olive leaf extract, I'm taking black walnut and uh, oil of, or no, Oregon grape root. 
Oil of oregano is also antifungal, but I'm not taking that. So, um, yeah, I think that if you do have any, any type of symptom or if you think even you might have it a little bit, go and start now because I, it's been two years since I think that this sort of problem started in my system and three weeks ago or just before I started the master cleanse, it really got, it spiked and it got really bad. But if for some reason it hadn't spiked and it just had continued on for another two or three years and I didn't really address it, um, I think all of my symptoms and all of the challenges that I've been going through over the past three weeks would be two or three times more difficult. Um, so definitely, and even honestly, if, even if you don't think you have any type of yeast overgrowth at all, but you're just sort of like maybe health conscious and you take a multivitamin every day, um, incorporate one antifungal in your diet on a regular basis. And even if that's just making an effort uh, to eat probiotic yogurt every day, um, there's also active bacterial culture in sour cream as well. Um, and I've been watching, I love to cook too, okay? So I love to cook, I love food, I always have. It's very zen for me to cook in the kitchen. You know, I have multiple recipe files online. I have tons of cookbooks. I, I buy Cooking Light every, every month, the magazine, which is a great magazine, by the way. Um, and I've been watching Top Chef, and they use yogurt as a supplement for cream in very elevated uh, cuisine all the time. So probiotic yogurt and, and uh, sour cream, if you just read the ingredients, often has uh, active bacterial culture. So both of those things, you, I think, you can probably substitute in your diet, um, which will both help with your gut flora and kill yeast off. And then also just something as simple as um, garlic. So garlic loses its antifungal and antibacterial properties if you boil it for more than 20 minutes. So, but roasting it and frying it, as long as you don't overcook it, as long as you can still, there's a little bit of that rawness to it or sharpness even, you should be able to taste it. Like boiled garlic after 20 minutes doesn't taste like anything. So if it still has a garlicky essence, it probably is antifungal. So even if it is just incorporating those in your daily diet, um, I am really strongly guessing, I, I have this really strong feeling that in the next two to 10 years, you're going to start seeing anti-yeast uh, symbols all over your grocery store, all over the foods that you've been eating, um, anti-Canada, uh, yeast buster. It might be a different thing, but I definitely think that you're going to start seeing it. So I wanted to talk a little bit about something today. So I watched recently an hour and a half long special um, on the Discovery Channel with Dr. Suzuki. And Dr. Suzuki, what he was looking at was why in the last 10 to 15 years, there's been such a spike in obesity levels. Um, so obviously a lot of the American and Canadian diet um, isn't very healthy. So, you know, Kentucky Fried Chicken, McDonald's, all of this, you're very well, well aware. But the thing is, is that Wendy's and McDonald's and KFC and all of these, you know, like burger type meatloaf, like not the healthiest type of foods, People have been eating that for a long time. It's not just within the last 10 years that this is something that's just integrated in our diet. So there is obviously something else going on. So what Dr. Suzuki was looking at was why so many people in the last 10 to 15 years are obese. Why is it so hard for people to lose weight? Even if you're not obese, people are generally just bigger and fatter than they used to be. So why is that? And um, so what they did is they looked at a number of different toxins like uh, BPA, which is a pesticide that, uh, or not, sorry, BPA, it actually is a pesticide, but it's also found in plastic, like right here. So there's, there is BPA right here in this water bottle, um, and I think that the average person has, I don't remember what the percentage is, but a certain amount of BPA in their bloodstream at all times, because there's BPA in everything. There's BPA in the liner of cans, there's BPA in basically every type of plastic. Um, so anyway, uh, so they looked at BPA, they looked at chlorine, which is found in abundance in our water system. So every time you take a shower, every time you take a bath, every time you drink a glass of water, even if it's boiled, there's still chlorine in it. Um, they looked at, uh, what was the other big one? Estrogen, estrogen levels in the water as well. So what they did is they had like frogs and rats and mice, and they would take, so for example, one frog would be in one aquarium, and the water in the aquarium would be filtered. And then the next aquarium with, with the other frog would be contaminated with BPA. 
So what they found was by the time the frog had reached its adult life, the frog that had been contaminated with the BPA was at least two times the size of the frog that was in filtered water, and they were fed the exact same amount of food, and they, you know, the, the, the exercise was the same. So they did it with hamsters and rats as well, um, and mice. Um, and all their findings was the same. So there was the BPA, um, it was consistent across the board. And this is professors and scientists from across the globe that were being interviewed and they, their research was being shown. Um, and yeah, and they also looked at estrogen, which had similar but not quite as strong, though, you know, they were like 1.5 times bigger than um, the, the animal that wasn't contaminated. But BPA was definitely the strongest. So very interesting. I find that to be very interesting. Coming from someone who eats eight to ten servings of fruit and vegetables a day, eats maybe like one or two servings of junk food a week, um, but most of the time my junk food comes from, you know, like Planet Organic or I'm going to even show you. Hold on a second. <clears throat> Okay, so I'm obviously not eating right now, but the junk food that my boyfriend and I eat, here's an example. Snap pea crisp, snack salad, Caesar baked. So that is like a chip for us, okay? So this is um, a very low calorie baked snap pea chip, okay? And they're delicious, by the way, and you can buy them at your health food store. They're also organic. Another example, Cheesies, okay? These are Barbara's, they're organic, they're all natural. Um, they are made from corn, so they're like, it's like a cheesy, um, but it's, it's uh, all natural cheese and there's no type of preservatives um, of any kind. All the, all the ingredients make sense, and again, that they're much lower in calorie than most, and they're baked. Um, so, like, I just didn't, like, I'm, I am not someone who eats a lot of junk food, and if I am eating junk food on occasion, you know, we'll buy ice cream. But again, it's usually a high-quality um, product. People have been eating cream for so long, and then, you know, m I would balloon. Like, my, my, my weight and my, my, the way that I felt, I just felt bloated and swollen and just huge all the time. So it just, it wasn't making sense. It wasn't adding up. So... I do think that among toxins and estrogen and chlorine and BPA and blah, 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 which is maybe causing some of the weight gain, um, I do think that yeast is a, another contributor. So symptoms of severe yeast overgrowth includes a much higher risk of developing things like colon cancer because of the candida in your colon. Um, it also increases your risk uh, for diabetes. Obviously, you know that. So people who are obese, who are overweight as well, um, are also at much higher risk of uh, being diabetic. So yeast, I think, you're going to see it in the next five to ten years. People are going to be like, oh, that's why I'm fat. So anyway, incorporate it in your diet. I'm 22 years old. I'm pretty sure I have a very severe yeast, yeast overgrowth in my body. Um, which is causing all of this stuff. And I am a relatively healthy and active human being. So, food for thought. Um, I think that that is pretty well good for me right now. The only, oh, I have, a, I have a very busy weekend. So I have, um, today's Wednesday. So tomorrow is Thursday. I have a gig in the evening. I'm a musician, by the way, if I think I mentioned that in my other videos. So I have a three-hour, two- to three-hour show Thursday, which is tomorrow. I have a three-hour show on Friday, four hours away, and we're staying the night there. And then the next morning, the four-hour drive back, and then we have a two-hour show in the afternoon, and then another show that night, which is Saturday. So two shows on Saturday for another three hours. So that's a total of five hours on Saturday. And then we have another show on Sunday evening. So I have five shows in four days. Um, lots of energy is going to be needed. Um, I hope that I am up to it um, energy-wise. I think I'll be okay as long as my, like, cold flu-type symptoms sort of chill and I can just sort of concentrate on playing the violin and, you know, schmoozing and enjoying people's company and hanging out. 
Um, so, yeah, busy weekend ahead. Um, it is daunting, you know, 40 days. It's such a long time. It is. It is such a long time to not eat. It really, really is. And, you know, I don't like kudos to those people out there who've been able to do it for 40 days. Kudos to those people who've done it for 10 because it really is challenging. And when you're around people who are eating, it makes it much more difficult. Um, luckily, oh, um, like I said, so after day 14, my sugar cravings and cravings for junk food sort of ended. Um, and instead now sort of what, it's not even so much craving, but what you want is, you know, like a nice big bowl of pho from, from a Vietnamese restaurant or like even just vegetable soup or, um, like your grandmother's stew, you know, or, um, a homemade gluten-free pizza crust with arugula and prosciutto and pear or like, you know, it's, it's a bit more like. You just sort of want to enjoy the food you want to eat, um, healthier food. The sugar cravings sort of stopped. And my boyfriend and I actually have a bit of an inside joke. So a couple of nights ago, I had a splitting headache. It was really bad. And I was almost giggly, like it was so bad. And um, I was telling him that it almost felt like I was going through withdrawal, like I was a heroin addict or a cocaine addict or something, and I was going through withdrawal symptoms. Um, and really, that is what's going on. Um, when you have a yeast overgrowth, you have very strong cravings for sugary and like alcoholic fermented type foods. Um, so like pickles and um, any type of like dairy or carbohydrate, anything bad for you, anything really high in sugar because that's what feeds the yeast. So after not feeding my body any of that sugary, um, alcoholic -y fermented stuff, I found that, you know, I got sick, and it was like I was seriously going through withdrawal for sugar. It was crazy. It was like, it's nuts. Um, I do feel better than I have in the past six days. Also, quick note, I did take an antihistamine last night, so my mom has been messaging me being like, make sure that when you start eating food again, you, you know, keep track, go slow, so you know what you're allergic to. So last night, after not eating anything for 19 days, um, I was totally fine all day. I hadn't taken antihistamine in almost eight days. Um, I went to the movie theater. I was fine. By the end of the movie, I was itchy. By the time I got home, I had a terrible bout of, of dermographism, and I didn't have anything or do anything out of, out of normal. So it is obviously something... Um, I'm sure that I'm allergic to food too, but there is obviously something in my environment that I came into contact with at the movie theater that made me extremely itchy. Maybe it was the soap I used um, in the washroom at the theater to wash my hands. You know what I mean? Maybe it was a detergent that they, they had used on the floor or on the seats or and it came into contact with my skin. Like, there's no way of knowing, but I had a very bad bout of dermogravism from something in my environment, and I had to take an antihistamine. So it kind of sucks, but what do you, what, you got to do what you got to do. I can't just, like... Honestly, it's just so, it's so itchy, I can't even tolerate it. So, um, but yeah. So that, those are my updates. Thank you guys for watching. I know that I sort of rant and do the whole, like, 20-minute long video thing. Um, <laughs> I will make another video for you in two days or three days. So day 22, day 23, I will give you guys more updates, let you know how things are going. Um, yeah, have a great day.